Hey, what's good? This is Martin, and I just finished recording a nearly 50 minute long video on how to make melodies and everything from scratch. So, yeah, I think you guys will love this. Um, I made a sort of orchestral piano melody, and I, I know a lot of people like that style when I make it on my live streams and stuff. So, I hope you guys like it. I just wanted to steal a little minute from your time. And I wanted to say that my Discord server is more active than ever. The link is down in the description. It's a nice space for producers where you can send your work. We can talk. We can share information, share tips, share everything. So it would mean a lot if you joined. Two things. I have a coffee now. So if you want to support this channel and these videos, you can buy me a coffee. Link down in the description. And all my drum kits, all the drums I used to make beats are also linked in the description. So if you want my drum kits, you can get them and support this channel. It really does go a long way. And having said all of that, I won't steal any more of your time. I hope you enjoyed this video. And yeah, let's just go in. Hey, what's good everyone? It's Martin, and today we have the second episode of the How to Get Into Music Production course. Um, in case you haven't watched the first video, this is the second one. And yeah, I thought I, would, I was going to make more videos in between the first video, which is what do you need to get into music production, and this one. But I figured, you know, I could just save yourself and myself some time and explain most of what I would have explained in like videos in between in this video. So... This will also teach you how to like how to use your DAW a little bit. And my idea is yeah, I'm I'm trying to make this course as concise as possible to yeah, you know, steal as little of your time as possible. So having said that, why don't we just jump into the, the DAW directly? Let me just accommodate my screen really quickly over here. So this thing you're seeing right here, this is called FL Studio. It's one of the many um softwares that are used to make music. Um, some of the more most popular ones are FL Studio, Logic, Ableton, but I, I mainly use FL Studio. This is FL Studio 21, as you can see right here, and I'm on the version 21.0.1. .1. So um, this video will work if you're in FL Studio 11, 12, 20, 21, whichever version you're in. The only thing is that some of the options that I'm going to be using might not be available on the version you're using if it's older than mine. There's newer FL21 versions. I'm just, I'm, I've just been lazy to update it. Um, but yeah, one thing is everything will be linked down in the description below. You can buy a license of FL Studio. You have lifetime upgrades from, let's say they drop FL Studio 22 next year. You'll be able to update for free. Any amount of updates, definitely recommend it. So why don't we just begin? Um, so making melodies is a really interesting process. I have a piano over here, as you can see. I'm I wouldn't say I'm a piano player. I can play some songs. I'm learning. I'm practicing every day, but I don't know much music theory. Music theory is something that I cannot even define myself fully. It's this set of rules and it, it's this set of rules for music, you know? It's the science behind music if you want to see it like that. And 
I don't know much about it. So most of what I'm going to be teaching you today comes from my five years plus of experience making music. So why don't we just jump into the studio and grab a piano sound? So I'm assuming this is your first time using Apple Studio, your first time ever opening it. So I'm going to have to explain everything from scratch. This video is meant for people that are either already making music or already like they just opened up FL Studio for the first time. No matter at what level you're in, I hope this video can help you. So um, if you open FL Studio right here, you're going to see something like this. This is called the playlist. And here's where you're going to put your patterns, your sounds. This is basically you lay down everything here and you work on the what, what we call the structure of your track. So we have in FL Studio something called a pattern system. If you press F6 on your keyboard or this this little um, key right here, you're going to open up this this thing called Step Sequencer. And the Step Sequencer is where you load all of your plugins. So when you're writing your first melody, I want you to go and grab a piano sound. If you don't have any pianos, you can download this BST called Laughs. It's free, spitfireaudio.com, and you can download Laughs. But if you're lazy, you don't want to do that, or you don't have space in your computer, I want you to go in here and grab FL keys. It's under the miscellaneous part. Why am I saying this? When you're making your first melody, or when you're making any melody, my best advice is for you to grab a very neutral sound, like a piano. I know people that they make their melodies using 3x oscillator, which is right here. They just make a sine wave like this and they make their melodies using that, but I just find it a little bit obnoxious. So you can use either FL keys or laughs or any other BSD you have uh, with piano or any sound really. If you're more experimented, you can just skip this and go straight into making melodies with other sounds. But if you're a beginner or you want to get better, I advise grabbing a piano sound. And you might ask me why. So sometimes, uh, let's say you have a synth. Let's let's grab a synth. Let's grab another legacy cell. This is a really old BSD by Korg. So this sound, it, it sounds cool. But how do I know that this note I am playing right here, this is a C. How do I know this note C? is actually perfectly tuned to see the, the same way a piano should be. Let's open up an EQ and I'll explain this better. Each note has its own frequency. So if you come right here, you can right click. This is just theoretical. You don't need to open up an EQ. This is just for, to illustrate my point. If you come in here, key, you're going to see that you have one option for every key. So let's say we have C right here and C uh, A4. A4 is the note that every instrument is tuned to when it's tuned to like a, a regular tuning. A4 is the standard. It's 440 hertz. Uh, four, no. No. 440 hertz. That, there we go. That's better. Um, and basically, every instrument, um, every A in every instrument should be tuned to this exact frequency um, for it to be tuned accordingly to like the standard tuning. This this is not important. My point with this is that sometimes when you use sounds that are not a piano to make a melody, you might be saying, oh, I'm playing a C right here, or I'm playing a C right here, but it's not actually a C. Like it looks like a C, it sounds like a C, but it's a little bit off, it's a little bit detuned. So when you pass that melody to another sound or you try to make other melodies on top of that, it will sound off. So my advice is just go and grab a piano. So the first concept I'm going to introduce you when you're making melodies is something called a scale. So a scale is a group of notes. When you're writing down a melody, you will want to work in the same group of notes. So for example, a very common example is the scale of C major, which is all the white notes. So this scale right here that you're seeing, this is C major. These are all the notes and C major. So I don't want you to learn every single skill there is because you don't need to. That's the great thing about FL Studio. You can just come in here. You can go and view scale highlighting and select any skill. For this tutorial, we're going to be using either major or minor skills. So I can say, okay, I want to work in the skill of D minor. And then you'll have a skill right here. These notes that are lighter are the notes that are within this skill. These are the notes that you'll be able to play and write on melodies. This is very important because if you don't know this, 
um, your melody would just sound bad. So you need to know before making a melody that there are certain notes you can play and certain notes you cannot. So there's just many options. So the first one, this is something I really like about FL Studio and one of the things that makes FL Studio so powerful is there's an option called automatic scaling. So basically, if I play the note of F and then I go down to E and then I go down to, I don't know, um, B, it will tell me automatically in which scale I'm working and right over here, as you can see, it will say it over here and it's just E major. So basically if I, uh, it's, this is called transposing is when you take your melody up and down any amount of semitones, a semitone is the space between one note and another note. So if I transpose my melody one, uh, semitone up, it will automatically say F major and it will change the notes that are, that it's highlighting. So basically it's telling me while I build my melody, which notes I can play and which notes I cannot play. So once that we have all of this to our knowledge, we can just begin making melodies. So let's start with B, for example. Let me actually change my FO Studio notation to English notes. So everybody who watches this tutorial has a better idea. I'm using a note system called Solfege or Solfeo, which is the notes we use in Spanish. Uh, so let me just change it to English and I'll be right back. So I'm back and it's time to make a melody. So let's just start with B. And let's make our first melody. So there's a few concepts you need to know, and I'm going to explain this the least technical way I can. So anybody can understand that regardless of the, the, the amount of musical knowledge you have, there's certain intervals of notes that will sound good. And with this, I mean, if I press alt, uh, this in windows, it would be control B in Mac. It's common B. If I press common B, I can duplicate my note. So I can go down five notes up or down and it will always sound good no matter what so one two three four five and then i can go one up so right here we just made a like baseline progression or a chord progression if you wanted to these are not chords this is just like like a, a progression of notes. These notes will work as the base of your melody. I really recommend you to start your melody from the ground up. So it's the base. And then if you want to make chords, a chord is a group of notes. It's minimum of three notes. Uh, and you can keep building up notes and make bigger chords. But basically, if you put any key, let, let's start from scratch again. Let's say D and I go up five, one, two, three, four, five. It still sounds according. I don't know what's the reason behind this. I don't know why it works, but for making bass lines, I always do that. I press a note and then I go down or up five. And the best instrument you can have is your own ears. So once you have this first two notes decided, you'll, I want you to go in your head. Let's while I'm making this, open up your own FL Studio, and make your own melody, choose any two notes then think, okay, how can I keep this bass from going up? Like, how can I keep this melody going? And that's a very important process. So, it sounds dun, 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 dun. So I want you to like imagine in your head how this melody would work, how the melody would go. And now let's just start building up. I want to build chords. So what can I do? Let's dun. I want you to imagine in your head what the melody will sound like, because at the end of the day, your best instrument is your ears and your head. So imagine how do I want this chord to sound? Dun. And then I want it to go down. How much? I don't know. Let's just look for it. I want this melody to go down and then maybe keep going down. I don't know. Let's figure it out. So we have this first two notes and I want it to go down. So maybe that sounds good. And then let's go up again. And there we go. We have our first two notes. Uh, we're one note away from making a chord. So let's just keep adding notes. 
and let's go down maybe so the, the the secret behind this to make these melodies that sound cohesive and coherent so quickly is auto scaling and the reason why i'm able to say oh i want this melody to go down and i don't need to try a bunch of notes to see which one sounds good it's because fl studio is telling me okay you can play this note 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 and so forth and it sounds like this So now that we have made our chords, we can do something called strumming. This is an option that is not available on Ableton like this. You can do it manually. But in FL Studio, if you press Alt S, no, it's Control S if you're on Mac. Control S, and I think on Windows it's com uh, Control S. I'm not sure. I haven't used Windows in a while. You'll get this little panel that says Strumizer. And you can adjust this, this strength. And basically what this will do, it will offset every note by... A tiny 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 amount and it will change the velocity the velocity is the volume at which a note is playing um a tiny bit so it will make your chords sound more human like they weren't played by a machine like they were played by a human because of course you wouldn't play all the notes the same volume there will be some variation there will be some variation in time and this will give your melody a more humane feeling I actually just didn't get to really change it like like that. We can take this one note down and see how it would sound. And then we can just start adding notes in between. Let's this melody sounds very spacious, but we wanted to um we want to add more stuff in between, so we can just start adding notes anywhere we would like. And then we can just start moving them around. I really advise you to either sing or imagine mentally what it would sound like. Because it will make your process so much easier, I promise. Don't be afraid, don't, don't be embarrassed. Something that also works is keeping the same note throughout multiple chords because it makes it sound even more cohesive. So let's try it out. have a beautiful chord progression so let's start adding a melody on top of it we, we we don't need to end here we can add more and it keeps getting on be it keeps getting better so my, my advice again turn on auto scaling because as you can see most of what I'm doing is imagining the notes in my head so I know where I want my melody to go but I don't know exactly which note that is like I know I want to I want my melody to go hmm, but I don't know what note that is and you know let's say I'm on D and I want my melody to go hmm. I know that I can pick between these two notes, these two notes, this note, this note, this note, these two notes, but I don't know it exactly which one. So I can just imagine the note and then look for it. There we go, F sharp. And let's actually layer down a, um, what's the term? A bass line. So we can just grab this. We can grab these uh, select tool or press the letter E. 
and then we can just press shift on our keyboard it's this key right here we'll press shift at the same time we press the left button on your on our mouse and you'll see that we duplicate it so we can press command and the this key right here command and the down arrow it's either command and the down arrow or control down arrow on fl studio uh, on windows and now we have a baseline which is these notes right here um can i just play by And it looks a bit big, but this is our melody. We just made it from scratch. And if I can make it without any musical knowledge, you can as well, because your most useful tool is your ears. So now let's keep adding stuff. And I'm gonna be using third-party BSTs. A BST basically is a plugin. Um, there, there's many out there that are free. I really recommend this website called pluginboutique.com. You can just come in here to the free plugins and try and find cool stuff. So let's just look here. You can actually usually find pretty cool stuff, sampler synths and stuff. Um, I really, really recommend getting this BC. I'll show you real quick. I already talked about it, but still, let me get Mate while it loads. So this BC I'm talking about is called Labs. And basically Labs is a sampler. I mean, it's not a sampler. It's like a library loader that has a bunch of sounds it has pianos and keys and everything you could want and the best of all is that it's entirely free so i i really really recommend it even if like doesn't matter at what stage of your music production you're in it will definitely help you out and i also recommend getting uh, this instrument called the um bbc symphony orchestra because it's also free so knowing that why don't we just make like a orchestral melody so i'm gonna pull up uh labs so i'm gonna try and using only free bsd so anybody that's watching this video can recreate this at their own home so why don't we just get like a a i don't know what i'm looking for i could maybe look let's try this sustain guitar i don't like it we can use this pad so we can press this little thing right here control C control B and now we have a pad so you'll see this little like holes you have behind your plugin name these are called mixer tracks so we can scroll and assign this plugin to a mixer track so I'm gonna do one for this lapse and two for this lapse and if we double click we'll get this mixer and here the good thing is we can add plugins to our to our things. So we have this piano right here. And I want to add this effect called convolver. So if we come in here, we'll find Freddy Convolver under the delay reverb section. You won't find any of these BSTs. These are all third parties. You can install them externally, but you'll have all of these. Alright? Most of these. So let's open Freddy Convolver. Then I'm gonna go into presets. Blur white, and I'm gonna get this really nice reverb on my piano. It sounds like this. But I also want my piano to like sound, so I'm gonna turn on dry. What this means is that you have dry and wet signal. The wet signal is the one that comes out of a plugin. Like let's say you have reverb, you know? Reverb is this like the echo effect. So if I send something through reverb, like the, the wet signal will come out. But the dry signal is the one without the effect applied. So you can play with the amount of dry and wet signal on both of them and get a more affected sound and a less affected sound, if that makes sense. So and let's add an EQ. And as you can hear, there's very like there's very like a very muddy sound, very um how would i call it it's very low frequencies that don't sound good and you can see them here this is all the bass area on the EQ. i'm gonna explain this later I'm, I'm gonna explain what this is but i want to take those frequencies out because they don't sound good on the on the reverb so i can come in i can come here in presets i can do the 20 hertz preset and then move it 
and now it sounds better so basically this this thing you can see right here it's called the frequency spectrum so basically um you have it goes from i, I was about to sneeze i might sneeze hold on so basically it, every time i speak it makes me want to sneeze more so it goes from 20 hertz all the way over to i think it goes to 18 kilohertz like oh no 20,000 hertz so as I was speaking before, every every sound has its own frequencies. And so the sounds that are not very high pitched, they're mid pitch, they will go around here. The sounds that are very bassy, they will go around here. The sounds that are sub bassy, like below bassy, you know, that they're th th those are the sounds that make your car sound like broom, you know, when you're on your car listening to music. Those will be over here. And the ones that are very high pitch are the ones that are going to be here. The thing is that you'll, you'll have many sounds in your melody and you don't want them fighting over for space. Each sound must have its own space in this frequency spectrum. And you don't need to look at it to know it. You just need to hear. And so this, this doesn't really apply for like pads, for example, because a pad is something that sounds like this. A pad can be in the same frequency as a piano as it is right here it's in the same frequency spectrum like very near each other but it's complementing one another they are not fighting for attention or sound so it's not that in, it's not that important but if you have multiple pianos for example you want them to sound in different areas so they are not clashing each other for sound or noise so now, why don't we add like a violin? So I'm gonna go into my plugin section and I'm gonna find the BV Symphony Orchestra I was talking about. This is a free plugin, you can get it. No commitment, you don't need to invest any money on it. So we'll go in here and we have, we have woodwinds, percussion, brass, strings, everything you could need. So let's grab a violin and let's make this knob right here is for volume and this knob right here is for panning. So if I turn it all the way down, it will be all the way to the left. And if I turn it all the way up, it will be all the way to the right. So I want it to be a little bit offset to the left. So it's just like that. And let's turn it down a little bit. I want it to be almost like a pad. I want it to be a very subtle detail. So we'll go into the piano roll. You might not see your notes like this. You might not see your white notes like I'm looking at them. So you'll come in here, you'll come in view, and you'll turn on ghost channels. If not, it would look like this. It's way easier to make melodies if you can see the other notes you have already played. So ghost channels. And now let's just lay my violin on the top notes of my melody. Just like this. Turn it on. We can, if we want to see how our melody would sound in different keys and different pitches, we can select them all over here. We can come in here, transpose and change the amount of semitones. So let's say I want to take my melody down three notes. I can do minus three. And let's just add variation. We can just make our own melody now. Now you know how to make your melody. This is all about practice, okay? The more you make it, the more the easier it will be for you to do this process I am doing. I've been doing this every every day for the past five years. So I have I have it's it's easier for me to do it than it will be for you the first time. That's for sure. But don't be discouraged if it's hard for you the first time. It's meant to be hard. And just write what you feel like writing. Let's make the melody go down. I want it to sound really sad, really mellow. Let's turn off the reverb. We can turn off effects by clicking on the screen knob right here. 
and let's turn off the the pad. I wanted to, I want just to hear the piano, and I'll see if I add back in the, the the pad later. Don't feel any pressure. Just you can take stuff in, take stuff out. You can make melodies and then never add them on. So don't worry about it. You just make whatever you feel like making. The point of this is to have fun. If you're not having fun, you're doing stuff wrong. <laughs> I don't like how this sounds. One one thing that's very important is that you can always make changes to your melody, so don't stress over it. It's not true. Let's try with F sharp. That sounds much better. So my, my melody went from this to this. You might not hear the difference, but I do hear it. And it sounds much better now. And I want my violin to go back up. Maybe I want it to go up in this section and then as a response you know you can make melodies that are like a response so you have this first section and then you have this other section which starts the same or very similar but it's responding to the other one so instead of going up i wanted to go down and see how it would sound you know we can always try it's trial and error And it sounds amazing. It sounds awesome. Let's just keep on adding stuff. Let's just keep adding ideas, throwing ideas all across the board, and let's see what we keep and what we don't keep. I love how this is coming together. It's amazing. So let's just add another another sound, you know? Why don't we add like horns? Let's make this very like very um strong sounding, very um, like aggressive. This is not the kind of horn I was expecting, to be honest. So let's just add a bass. Uh, what about this bass? Let's turn it uh, turn it down. Not really either. Why don't we add like a synth, for example? Let, let's just go over ideas. So we can open up 3x oscillator. It's a free plugin. And basically, this is super basic synthesis. You'll have a few different waveforms. So you have a sine wave, which sounds like this. A saw wave. This wave, I don't know what it looks like. This is a triangle wave. And we have this, what does it look like? It looks like an N almost. But I sort of want a sine wave. So you have three oscillators. An oscillator is basically like a wave shape. It's this wave you're selecting right here. And you have these other two, and I don't want them, so I'll just turn them all the way down. And now I have this cute little wave. So you can press in this setting knob right here, come into this plug and like a gear option. And then you have on the volume, this is called the envelope. So the, the changes on the knobs you make here affect how your sound will sound. So if I turn on attack, instead, let's say the attack is when I press a note here, it's how fast it sounds. So if I turn it up, it will be like more, like more faded in. Hold is how much time the note is held for. So if I turn it all the way down, but if I turn it up, and then decay is how much it takes for it to like go down. The sustain is basically, um, I, I don't really know how to explain this. Let's, let's just start with release and sustain will come back later. Release is how much after you stop playing the note, it takes for it to stop making noise. And sustain is basically like hold. Um, that's the best way I have to explain it. I'm very sorry I don't have a better explanation, my bad. So what I want to do right now is I want to add a little bit of attack so it doesn't sound like this. If I add some attack, that sounds better. So let's assign this to a mixer track and let's make a counter melody. 
So here's where a, a, a aspect I, I explained a little while back comes in very handy. And this is the whole frequency spectrum. So take, in, take into account that you don't want your sounds to be fighting one another for space and attention. So let's make something and a pitch that hasn't been played yet and, as, and with a sound that hasn't been played yet. So... <laughs> I, this will sound during the build-up, for example, of my melody, so... That was something wrong. So just duplicate it. Duplicate it one more and one more time. So I'm going to select all of this and duplicate it using the same key I told you about earlier. It's Ctrl B or Common B. And now we have this Connor melody. So it sounds very lame. So we can add effects to it. So I'm going to open up this mixer track by double clicking here. And in slot one, I'm going to right click. And then I'm going to add free delay three, and this is delay. And so it will sound like this. That's very loud. So the thing we can do is we can come in here to this wet knob. This is what I was talking about, dry and wet signals, and turn it down. And I can come in here and change the delay. So basically delay stereo, it's that it sounds on both ways, like on both headphones. Delay mono is that like the same signal sounds on both of them. And delay ping pong is that it goes from one headphone to the other like this. So I'm going to turn ping pong in and then pen all the way to one side, then smoothing all the way up. And I'm going to add reverb to the sound, which is basically echo. So I'm going to add a 3D reverb. This is the size of the reverb. This is the wet, this is the dry, and DK is the amount of time the reverb will last for. So I wanted to have a, a big reverb, and I want the reverb to sound before the delay. So I can move it up with my mouse scroll, just like, let me, let me try again, just like this. Beep. And let's add a piano counter melody. So let's let's add like little top notes that will work as a like I don't know. They they will work. I don't know how to explain it. Let's slow down the tempo. So we have right here a hundred beats per minute, which is let's slow it down to like one twenty, for example. And let's take your melody two notes down to see how it would sound. If you press Alt, oh no, if you press the, uh, I think it's the option, yeah, it's the option key on Mac, and your scroll, you can take the note up or down and, and uh, strength or volume. I'm going to take it all the way up. And again, just try to hear the melody you want to make in your head and then just write it down. So I basically kept working on my melody and now I have this little, um, what's the term? This little counter melody. It sounds a bit like this.
and I'm also I also have this little uh, Celeste over here. Let's add like a second violin that will be panned to the right a little bit and playing different notes. So we can just move it over here to the right. And then. So this one is playing A. I want to play, let's say, C sharp. And we could just keep on adding more orchestral elements. Let's add, for example, a um, yeah, like a really strong string bass. So I'm gonna be using a different plugin. This is called Contact Seven, and this is a paid plugin. But I'm gonna be using this free bank called the Free Orchestra. And the good thing about this is that you can get it for free. So the, with the contact and everything. So you look up the Project Sam Free Orchestra, you're gonna come in here and you can play these sounds using Contact Player, which is for free. So you can have all the sounds I'm gonna be using for free. So I'm gonna add like a really low bass. I'm gonna use this preset called Bombastic Basses. So I'm gonna come here, copy these notes, just like this. Then I'm gonna press Command L to make them all fit together. And take the velocity down. And I'm gonna like arpeggiate them. No, it sounds good by itself, never mind. Let's add, for example, drums. We can add little orchestral drums to this. Let's turn the bell down because it's annoying me. So let's turn this all the way down. And then we can add, for example, I don't know, more violins, or um, let's see what we could add. Why don't we add this preset that's called Heroic Horns. Sounds good to me. So now we just come in here, piano roll. Now that we have our entire, now we have all of our melodic components ready, we can click here on our playlist, right click on our pattern, and then split by channel. And now you'll see that over here we have many of these little patterns we used to have, and it means that every one of our melodic components was separated into different patterns. So we can click Ctrl and Shift, this two node, this two keys over here, Control and Shift to select them all. So Control Shift and click, and then we can drag them here. Control B to duplicate them, and then we can change which notes, like which instruments, play at which time. So let's say I want my, only my piano to begin with the melody. And then I want the bell to come in here, 
and these little arpeggio to come in here and I don't want the, the, the drum to sound here and I don't want the horn to sound here either. It sounds awesome! And we can grab all of our melodies using the same control shift, right click, transpose, let's do three. And we basically turn that up. Let's add the reverb again. Sounds awesome. It sounds like it just came out of a fairy tale. I love it. And we just made it from scratch. Like if I could make this without any musical knowledge, you can too. For sure, no doubt. And I want this to be like my ending. Let's cut the bell over there so it doesn't sound anymore. And this is the melody that we have just made. This was the episode to you from the entire course on how to get into beat making. If you liked it, please subscribe if you want more in specific videos. Or I want to know how to make melodies on this style or this type of beat or anything. Let me know in the comments and I'll try to make it happen. And I appreciate you to watch for watching all the way over here. It means a lot. And I hope to see you in the next video next week. So yeah, thank you for joining us. See you soon.